Gang, 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 gang. What's up? How's everybody doing? Flip here, EUC Chronicles. Back for another one. So I've been, uh, you know, I've been out on the MSX, you know, um, more and more getting comfortable on, on the MSX, raising the speed level on there. Now, I'm, you know, cruising in the 30s, upper 30s and stuff like that, which is um, new for me, being a newer rider and all. I'm still not even a year in. Um, I bought my first EUC in July of last year, so we're coming up on my one year EUC anniversary pretty soon. But, um, you know, I've been thinking while I've been out riding, you know, I have the luxury, you know, being in upstate New York. And if you see in the videos, I get to ride in a lot of places where it's really unpopulated. You know, I have open roads damn near to myself. I have sidewalks damn near to myself. I have bike paths to some degree to, to myself in certain areas. You know, now when I ride on the regular, like the Hudson Trail and stuff like that, um, as you'll see in the, in the video after this, um, which I'm getting ready right now, um, it's a little bit different because there's people there and the Hudson Bike Trail, there's a lot of water on both sides. So although you get to ride fast in certain places and some places is not recommended at all because you literally have a six foot wide path to ride on and you have water on one side and water on the other side and, and, the, and the barriers that, that are there are taller than the EUC so if you were to fall off your EUC and it was to go flying the barriers aren't going to stop it at all it's going to slide right through there and, 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 and in some instances if the EUC goes off the side of the, the trail you're screwed it's over it's over because some parts you're like you know 12 feet up in the air and it's just a straight slope down into the water and it got me thinking because i was seeing a lot of comments um and people saying you know they can't wait to get a 60 mile per hour wheel i even seen a, a video on it with somebody speaking on it and i want to ask the question do we really need a 60 mile per hour wheel now i know i know everyone all the experts, the five years and up riders are going to say, of course, we need a 60 mile per hour wheel. And I'm not asking for those normal reasons of obviously to have the top end, to be able to, you know, get ahead of traffic. I understand all that. My main concern is, you know, with all the stuff that's been happening within the past month, and I'm not saying that the crashes, you know, haven't been happening this entire time, but just the amount of people crashing within the past month. I was just saying to myself, 60 miles an hour is ridiculously fast. For an EUC to go 65 miles an hour, 60 miles an hour, the battery packs are gonna have to be humongous. So that's a hell of a lot of weight. We're talking, you know, the, the Sherman already almost weighs 100 pounds. So is the, the Monster Pro. So let's just say we got a wheel now that weighs 125 pounds. EUCs are one of the few PEVs that when you fall, the unit doesn't stop. If you see motorcycle crashes, when motorcycles, you know, when guys bail on their motorcycle, the motorcycle is extremely heavy. So when they fall, you rarely see a motorcycle bounce, flip in the air. They usually just hit the ground and slide for forever. If you look at bicycles, when bicycles, when bicyclists fall, their bicycle doesn't really flip head over heels. If it does, it does it once. And then it hits the ground and it slides. EUCs are the only thing that I've ever seen where you bail off an EUC, that thing is going for 10, 20 feet, if not more than that. And now it turns into a flying projectile, depending on how fast you're going. And not only is it going, when it does flip head over heels, it doesn't stop. It's almost like once it starts flipping head over heels, it makes it worse and it travels further. It's part of the main reason why when I'm on the bike trails, when I see people in front of me when I'm riding my EUC, I slow all the way down because that's my only fear. If something were to happen, if the, if the control bird were to fail on me and it throws me off the EUC, I don't want a 60 pound wheel, which is what I'm riding right now, damn near, flying off, bouncing in the air, and headed towards somebody. So, let's say if we have our 60 mile per hour wheel, 
and you're traveling in the road because that's what most people want it for to, to beat traffic but you got three lanes of traffic behind you and you're flying on that 60 mile an hour wheel and you bail you can't control where that wheel's going what that wheel's doing and now you're not just a danger to yourself but you're a danger to everyone on the road within the 10 to 30 feet range if not longer than that and that kind of scares the hell out of me because like i said if you look at these videos here of people crashing look how far the euc travels and some of these people most of these people aren't even in the 40 mile an hour range so 60 miles per hour uh, you know and like i said the, the 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 crazy thing about it is the more weight the more speed the further the euc is going to travel and hey call me nuts for thinking about or worrying about other people on the road, but I can't stop thinking about other people on the road because it's more than just us getting injured. There's more at stake. And maybe some people aren't too concerned with with other vehicles and stuff like that around them. And hey, that's fine. You know, you're, you, have, you're, you have the right to your own opinion. But for me, when I hear 60 mile an hour wheel, I even saw somebody post about getting a 100 mile an hour wheel. Hey, why wouldn't it be cool to have a 100 mile an hour wheel? And I'm saying to myself also, when is enough going to be enough? And I get it. I haven't been riding for five years, so I'm not bored at traveling at 30, 40 miles an hour. I get it. I heard Cobra say something about traveling at 30 miles an hour gets boring because he's so used to it. And I can totally see that. But at the same time, Unlike a motorcycle, when you do bail at those speeds, you know, most people get to slide off, not saying that they don't get injured, I'm just saying with the right gear, the full motorcycle protection gear, you know, they can kind of slide off and, and walk some of that stuff off as long as they don't impact anything with that slide. But with a lot of these EUC falls, we're not so lucky. So when when will enough be enough? And like, if you do have a desire to go 100 miles an hour on an EUC, are any of us comfortable with all the crap that's been going on with all these wheels, with all the mysterious cutouts and, 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 and malfunctions and what have you? I mean, I'm just now scratching over 30 miles an hour and I'm not scared to go that fast. I'm scared of the unknown. That's why, you know, and granted, I'm not going to get crucified here because even though I'm scared of the unknown, I'm still riding without a helmet. But when I tell you I've taken so many spills at high speeds on bicycles and skateboards and never once have I hit my head and I and I contribute that to knowing how to fall and I know people are like, hey, there's no such thing as knowing how to fall. And there is. And I hate to say it, but some people just aren't athletic enough to understand. But if you really don't believe that knowing how to fall and knowing how to um, move your body in a way to keep yourself safe, go watch some parkour videos with these guys jumping off bridges and, and, and high, high roofs down to the ground and watch what happens. If those guys were to jump and fall and land flat, they're breaking their legs, arms shoulders the whole nine yards but because these guys know how to roll out of a fall and keep that momentum going it negates so much weight coming down in one spot it keeps the body moving and i've been fortunate enough to be you know to have crashes ever since i was a little kid to the point where it crashes is just a normal thing that comes with riding BMX or coming with riding with skateboards like we never ever got on a skateboard or a BMX I mean just to learn tricks on a skateboard you're gonna fall all the time you're gonna roll your ankle there's so many normal things that happen that over a period of time you just get used to it so that's the only reason why when I get on EU season people keep screaming out how dangerous they are I'm like no they're not necessarily that dangerous it's who's riding the EUC is what really makes it dangerous and your skill level of falling. Sure, you can go fast. Sure, you've practiced all these things, but most people do not practice falling. That's why when falls happen, a lot of people get hurt very, very bad because that's the one thing they don't practice or their body's not used to. So, and I'm not uh, demonizing anybody for not knowing how to fall, but I'm saying that there is 
a level of skill that is involved with falling and if you practice that over time it will save your skin but at 60 miles an hour psh, i don't know i really don't know but it just it just begs me to ask the question like when will enough be enough if we get a 60 mile an hour wheel who's gonna be the first person to say man we should get a i can't wait for the 80 mile an hour wheel and then like if that's the case why not just get a motorcycle if you require that amount of speed at least with a motorcycle you have two wheels to some degree it's a lot harder to fall you're not gonna get even if you got a cut out on a motorcycle you're not gonna flip over the handlebars Brakes don't just lock up out of nowhere on a motorcycle. There's so many things that, in, in some ways, motorcycles are much safer than EUCs. But because we haven't even fixed the problem coming out of the gate from the manufacturer with these mysterious cutouts and board failures and you know tires flying off the rim, can we wait until at least one company has perfected and 100% guaranteed that these problems won't arise before we suggest a 60 mile an hour wheel? Because who's gonna give it to us? Sherman or Gotway, it's not gonna be anybody else. No other wheel is gonna come out the gate that I foresee that's just gonna say, hey, 60 mile an hour, here you go without worrying about the backlash that's gonna come a year later from all these people ripping their faces off. And, and you know, seriously injuring themselves at, a fall, at 60 miles an hour and you don't know how to fall correctly? Even if you did, if you're not geared up on a level three protection, like full body suit, the amount of flesh you're ripping off, just fall on your hands with improper gloves. Like I said, I'm not here to demonize anybody, and, and, and obviously I know the benefits of having faster wheels if you're riding in traffic. But then, like, another thing that crosses my mind is when you do get the 60 mile an hour wheel, because I'm sure it's going to come at some point, do you guys intend to ride on the highway with these things? New York City guys talking to you? Because I know you are. I know you are. And that's what kills me too, because falling at that speed on a highway now when there's cars behind you doing 60? <laughs> hey man, call it an experience. Like I said, I'm just a new rider, so I'm just an observer. I'm just I'm, I'm just like an alien in a spacecraft, just sitting up, to, up there just watching all this stuff go on and just saying to myself, like I said, I don't wanna keep you guys too long. It's just a question I have and, and I wanna hear your response i want to hear your comments i want to hear what you what you think i want to hear what you how you feel about the community getting a 60 mile per hour wheel and um you know do you think that we're ready as a community to get one yet do you think the manufacturers are at the point where they can you know somewhat guarantee that they can give us a wheel that's not going to have any issues where a 60 mile an hour per wheel won't become a danger to yourself and other people on the road and you know, being a flying projectile at a hundred plus, you know, pounds. I don't know, man. I just, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. It just, it just doesn't seem like the, the, the smartest thing to do right now, you know? And, um, then like, you know, will, will these wheels come with, you know, special, power pads that keep you locked in that that make it easier for you not to lose your wheel or, or i don't know i don't know what has to be done because it seems like more padding and more rubber protection just makes the wheel bounce more and travel further so just my thought let me know what you guys think put it down below in the comments and uh let's have a discussion about it man like i said i i, I this is just something that's been on my mind since i've been seeing a lot of posts about the 60 mile per hour wheel and like i said I've, i'm just curious of what everybody else thinks you know a lot of people in here haven't you know don't travel above you know 35 plus or whatever the case may be and some of you do and some of you've been riding a lot longer than i have so you know maybe you know am i wrong will my will my opinion change in the next two years who knows but Right now, we just, you know, like I said, I, I have the, the for, I'm fortunate enough to ride where there's nobody around and I'm still paranoid about where my wheel's gonna end up if I, if I all of a sudden have to bail off. And um, 
I can only imagine, you know, being on a crowded road during rush hour, flying down the street, and the same thing happens, you know? So that's it. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Stay safe out there. Like I said, it's summertime. People are driving fast. Everyone's moving and grooving. So it's it, it makes it a lot easier for us to make mistakes. So let's just be careful out there and be safe out there and have a great one. I will see you in the next episode. Peace.